we have the honor of having with us tonight the great Banner Moza. I'm milling about with Martha Coolidge, and she's the director of I'll Find You. Welcome. Hi. Hi. It's great to meet you. How do you like my backdrop? You could see Stellan. There he is. I, I know I was going to say, this is quite a backdrop you have. <laughs> God, does he, do you live here or is this uh, something else? I wish I lived there, but you got to shoot here. So, so talk about that. Oh, so which house are you at? I think it's the house that Stellan Skarsgård character lives in. Okay, well, one of the issues there is, of course, we decorated, so it's a little hard to recognize, but it definitely looks like the same period, for sure. <clears throat> and where is this house located? It's um, in the countryside, uh, somewhat, I think, near Krakow. Oh, do you know that Poland is on my bucket list? I've always want, not a good time to go there now, of course, but I've always wanted to go. So, so tell, talk about very, shooting. It's very beautiful. Um, there certainly is still a lot of damage left from the war. So, <clears throat> it, but it is also a very modern city and it, it feels a little Parisian sometimes, you know. Uh, but it, it has beautiful homes and museums. And, and then in Woods, where we based the movie, there was a huge manufacturing uh, uh, community with uh, all these factories that really the Germans wanted. <laughs> so we uh, had to recreate that in some of the visual effects. <clears throat> So what was the atmosphere like? And may I call you Martha? Is that okay? Sure. Okay. So Martha, what was the atmosphere like shooting there? How did, how did the community sort of embrace the shoot? Well, it was, they, they've certainly seen movies being shot there for years. So uh, we got a lot of that kind of support where people are asking, what's the movie? What's it for? You know, and all this. Um, it, it's uh it's great. I mean, we didn't have any <clears throat> issues that are uh, sort of known issues to bother film companies. The only thing is it was there. It isn't a city filled with rental houses, so you don't have a lot of furniture that uh, is there to fill these castles or other things. So you'd have to go around to thrift shops and this and that and find it that way. <clears throat> Yes, because you had a very specific period to uh, find. Yes, we did. And you just need a lot. I mean, and it has to be somewhat related to each other when they go room to room. Yeah, and aside from how gorgeous this film is, it's beautiful romantically and lyrically, no pun intended. It has history. So what a wonderful combination of all these things. It it. It really was, and it was such a, a delight to make it, to be an American and in the country that's been sort of overrun by everyone. Everybody's had their battles there. And uh, I've had a lot of Polish students. Um, it's a very uh, creative place. The, the film school in Wedge is excellent. They have an excellent, excellent film school. And uh, it just was, it was, Great. It was very different from being here because the attitude is different. The attitude toward the war, it's like the war was yesterday. It's its very familiar. Mm -hmm. um, but the, uh, you know, it is improving. It's changing. Poland's going this way and that way. It makes adjustments. So we'll see where they end up. Well, actually, isn't this story uh, sort of inspired by one of the producer's ancestors? Uh, it, uh, somewhat, yes. Uh, and then the more we talked to people, the more we realized hundreds of people have stories like this. You know, it, it's not uncommon. So it was, it was great. The more people you talk to, the more ideas you'd get. 
So your actors, uh, Adelaide Clemens and Leo Suter, is that the way he pronounces it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, were they at all musical? Oh, oh yes. Um, what's interesting is the talents that came together on this film. First of all, Leo comes from a whole family of singers. Everybody's a singer in his family. And his older brother is the tenor. He can sing the tenor parts, Leo, but he's not a real classical tenor. So in mixing, when he was singing the, the tenor classical parts, we blend his voice in to the other guy, but they, they had very similar voices. And um, uh, Stellan doesn't sing at all. <laughs> I don't sing and I will not be singing. Okay. <laughs> That was helpful. But he was a great lip syncer. He was. He was great, and he was singing, and that's sort of, that's the way it is. Uh, and uh, he had a great singer. His singer had been, believe it or not, a soprano. I didn't know there are men sopranos, but anyway, and now a tenor. So it was. It was great. We had some very interesting people involved in the movie. And the music is from everywhere. It's like a lot of classical composers, there's some modern composers. It it was it was it took a long time to put that together. It was already on its way when I came aboard. Ah, uh, okay. And what about Adelaide? Did she know at all how to play? Oh, the Adelaide violin? had, believe it or not, studied a little had studied the violin. So she had to restudy it to become a little more familiar with it, but she had studied the violin and she's got a lot of musical sense. Um, at uh, Ursula, who's the little Rachel, she's a very good violinist. She can really play. And then Robert had to learn from scratch. The young Robert had to totally learn from scratch. So when you came on board, uh, was it, do you feel like your, your personal touch and knowing how to work with young actors had something to do with it? Well, I, I think so. Uh, I, I love actors and I certainly loved meeting all the actors that were in this movie. They're just a great collection of actors and from every country. I, I must say it was such a treat to have all these actors. It was not such a treat to have to loop them, but it was, uh, it was certainly a treat to know them and have them in the movie. Um, uh, I, it's hard to say because we we made it once we really started making it, meaning putting it on feet, uh, looking for locations. Then we went pretty fast, and so we were shooting. Uh, and for a movie, I mean, he wanted to shoot, you know, within two weeks, and that was ridiculous. But it it um, we we did shoot fast. And we did cast it. It was a beautiful experience. And um, I started my whole really learning about casting by working with Fred on, on the picture uh, when I first came to Hollywood that I was going to do for Francis Coppola. So Are we talking about Valley Girl? No, I, I was going to do a film called Photoplay for Francis Coppola. Oh, yeah. Well, and how ironic is that? That. Well, he and I have been trying to work together for years, so. So was that how you met Nicolas Cage, was through Francis? Uh, actually, I had, but I didn't know that. <laughs> so when Nick came in, I wondered why he was so mysterious and wouldn't talk, but he was very interesting. So I had him back for a reading, and I just wanted him very badly, and so I asked him back for a callback with Deborah, and um, uh, <laughs> when I we, when I called uh, Francis's people, uh, he said, well, I'm in this movie with Francis Coppola, you know, and he's, I still have to finish, and I said, oh, well, Francis is like a relative of mine, it's, I can't believe I said that to him, and uh, so I called up in uh, Oklahoma where they were shooting, and the uh, production manager gave me a really hard time. He said, well, we have a guy named Nicholas, but it's not Nicholas Cage. And finally he said, it's Nicholas Coppola. And that's when I, I realized, oh my God, 
And uh, but anyway, I, we did keep it a secret, and um, and he was great. Uh, it was it, he was great in the film. Yeah, what a coup for you in a it way. I think you introduced him to the world. I did, I did, and I told him I wanted to. I said, "You're going to be a star any way you go," but I'd like to be the one. <laughs> I love it. So from this film, Martha, who, who do you say, I mean, I know you can't really pick, but I think you made a, a couple of stars out of the lead actors. In well, let's hope, I think Leah should be. He's already starring in this uh, show that's um, just uh, debuted again, it's new season. Uh, what is it, Val Viking Valhalla or Vi Valhalla, Vi I don't know, one of those. Yeah. And uh, I mean, he is just a marvelous person and a wonderful actor. We have so many wonderful actors in this movie. So many great young people. Um, some of the older actors are just fantastic. Uh, Stellan, I think, I think Stellan had just an incredible part, Stellan Skarsgård, and um, so I'm, I'm very excited how, what kinds of uh, performances the audience is in to see, because they're very interesting performances. Well, what was it about Stellan that you thought he could play this role? And of course, he's, he's this big Maha opera star. Yes. Who can I, sing in real life. I know, I know, but that I never worry about that. That that's you know. Uh Stellan has a kind of internal, very internal comp, uh, complexity in the parts he plays. He's always very in it. And for that character who's got mm -hmm. so much going on. I mean, he's working against the Nazi government uh, on one hand, and you know, he's an opera star on another, and he's uh, mm -hmm. trying to tell Robert to be quiet about certain things. Um, so it's a it's it's a really complex part that he's playing, and very uh, fun doing the opera for sure. Yeah, so was that actually, were those scenes actually shot in an opera house or yeah. was that, a, it was? Yeah. yeah, we went to a opera house and uh, my set designer built the set. Uh, it was, um, it was really fun. It was great to do the theater a little, it was really fun. And um, in terms of the history of, of the film, what do you think audiences will come away with? I mean, it, it is romantic, but still there's a lot of history. It really is romantic, but it lets you see the cost of the war and the destruction of the war and what so many millions of people went through for the war. And I, I and I, I think that you come out of that with a positive. They're survivors, they have a future, and it's going to be a good one. So you, you are, uh, you're put through it, but you're not, it's not devastating. I mean, it is devastating, but it's not devastating in the way that there's no future and no hope. Have you heard from couples who have reunited since the war, I mean, you said there were thousands of stories, so. Oh yeah, that, well, we've heard from people who've reunited with their family, reunited with their loved ones, uh, people who've lost their loved ones or found another love. You know, it, it, there's so many stories and, and people did, sometimes a, a Nazi soldier would just let a person run away from the ca camps, believe it or not. And, um, sometimes uh, people would, bought, the family would buy them out. They would buy them out of the camps sometimes. So it's, it, you hear more of those stories when you're there and you ask them, well, didn't anyone survive? Yes, they did. Some people survived. They got in, they got out. And yeah. there's a great story about an underground group that got into Auschwitz and then drove out in the, Nazi uniforms. <laughs> it's a great story. That's a movie unto itself. I believe it's been a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I um, love it. So what are you working on next? 
Well, that's a good question. I have several projects of my own. Um, but one of them is a documentary, which I, I sort of look at and go, oh my God, do I really want to just, you know, worldwide, it's huge. I don't know. I need money. But the point is, I think it's really important to everyone. It, it is on some sense about acting and how we see people, how we understand people, uh, people in the public eye. And uh, so I'm, I'm working on that, but I also have several other movies, one of them called Blowing Up with Nick Kazan. And uh, I, have, I have a couple movies that I really would like to do. Yeah. And how do you feel your father influenced you in your career? Because I know that he sort of encouraged you to get involved with art and design, yes? Well, both my parents did. Uh, that was very much the center of our family's life, both music and art. And um, yeah, I think he did, but he was working all the time. He was uh, not but he did have his main office with drafting people in our house. So I did get to go and visit the office all the time and look at the models and, you know, I loved all that stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it was, it was good. And then I'd go to the, um, building sites where, where they were building the houses and he'd go out and talk to the workmen about, you know, whatever it was they were building. And that too, it was a, a very, it was an important instruction on how you work with people. And that was a very good thing to have in front of me. Well, you certainly were able to combine. He was long dead. But... Yeah, you're yeah. certainly able to combine art and music and everything and production design all in one in this movie. <laughs> Well, I, that is my, that is what I love about movies. And I love them uh, being so um, all encompassing, everything. The atmosphere, the people, the behavior, the habits, their, their you know, families, everything is very, very, uh, it, it's all engrossing to me. And I, I love being involved in all those aspects. Well, thank you, Martha, so much for joining me. I love this movie so much. Go oh, see good. it. I'm so happy to, to hear that. Thank you very much. Thank you for the interview. And I love seeing your corner of the old world. <laughs> hey, there he is. <laughs> yeah. yep, that's right. Take okay. care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Always new. Always refreshing. Always candid. Always billing about. Robin Milling delivers what celebrities are saying to you. To you. To you.